when people talk about the market, they talk about either the Dow or the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index. And what's interesting or fortunate and unfortunate about the crisis is it affects different companies differently. And the more dominant large cap you know, companies, the more, the stronger the balance sheet, the stronger the market position, those businesses are huge beneficiaries of, of the crisis. Um, and what the, what the market does not reflect are small businesses, private companies, more levered businesses that uh, don't have access to capital, don't have the same dominance as the public market. So a business like Amazon, which is a very big component of the, uh, the market is, you know, is up 45%. That does a lot, obviously, for the averages. It's, probably something approaching almost 10% of the S&P index today. And my guess is, you know, six, seven percentage points of the index, businesses like Google, Facebook, uh, I think long-term beneficiaries. And uh, ultimately the value of a business is the present value of the cash it generates over its life. And even if the cash flows are disrupted in the short term, if they're greater in the long term, the values will be higher. So I think the stock market is a snapshot of a portion of the economy. If it were, if you had an index of smaller businesses, uh, the market would be down 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. The market is a discounting mechanism and uh, people's estimates of the future uh, have been very volatile. You know, how long is the crisis uh, going to go on for? Uh, when will we get back to our normal life? You know, these things affect the input of the model uh, that analysts are, are using to value uh, securities. I think the other issue is the market in the short term is very much a sentiment index. It's a way for people to express their emotions. And uh, there's been a lot of emotions in the short term. And when that happens, uh, there's a corresponding degree of volatility. Uh, but I, I don't think the market is dramatically wrong. You know, when you look at the market on a company by company basis, we look at the companies we own, uh, you know, different businesses have been affected differently. Some, you know, many businesses have been, will be long-term beneficiaries. You know, if you think about the country as a business, uh, the country has a lot of intrinsic value, a lot of asset value. I would say one of the most valuable assets of the country is the, you know, the country owns 35% of uh, your income and my income. In a way, you can think about that. You know, that's the tax, the current level of uh, of taxation, federal taxation. So that's in effect, the country owns a 35% stake in your intrinsic value and my intrinsic value as a, as a contributor to the economy and the country retains the right to change that uh, percentage ownership at, it, at its will by, by in fact changing you know obviously tax policy so there is and of course we have enormous assets whether they're real estate assets or infrastructure assets um, you know that are, are so I think the the asset side of the US balance sheet is very very large obviously uh, you never want to let the, the liability side of the balance sheet grow too much and there are a lot of not just debt liabilities we have outstanding, but we have, you know, Social Security, you know, the, the enormous health care costs, Medicare, Medicaid, etc., you know, that we bear as a country. So it's something that is concerning. Um, you know, we are fortunate finding ourselves in a very low interest rate environment, um, but it's something to, to think about and be concerned about. Um, but it's sort of difficult to do the same kind of calculation of of the the net of the uh, leverage nature of the, of the United States, unless you do a proper uh, valuation of the asset side of the balance sheet, I, I think we're going to, you know, begin a recovery. You know, certainly by year end, I don't think we'll be back to anything close to a normal economy until probably the second half of 2021. I think if we have an early uh, vaccine, if, you know, uh, Pfizer's been talking about a potential distributable vaccine by the fall uh, that will obviously make an enormous difference. I think if we can reduce the treatment of the virus to, you know, one a test you can take at home and get an accurate result in 15 minutes, and it's a, it's telemedicine to your doctor to get, you know, the, the doctor to say, okay, you need a prescription for remdesivir in a inhaler format, and you can stay home for two weeks and be fine, you know, those things will make a fairly uh, significant, uh, you know, positive impact. But I think the We've had kind of a sloppy closure of the country for the virus, and we're going to we're having a bit of a sloppy opening. So I think you're going to you know you're not going to have business confidence return and consumer confidence return until you know the kind of people feel safe, truly safe. If I had to guess, that's really more like the second half of next year and into you know the beginnings in Q4 and Q1 and Q2 of next year.
again, all the things which will temper the economic recovery. But I do see a you know kind of gradual improvement in all fronts as the global healthcare system, every medical researcher in the world basically working on solving one problem and a lot of resources going into it. So I think I think by the fall we'll feel a lot better if we can take death off the table. Uh, if we can take severe illness off the table, I think that's certainly possible in this calendar year. Uh, people are going to feel a lot better about living and going out and living a more non normal life. Um, look, I, still, I think we have to protect the most vulnerable people economically uh, during this you know, period of time. And I don't, I don't know, you know, when do these programs precisely run out? Uh, you, you need to design programs. You know, I, we've, I've heard and we've made a lot of investments in the restaurant industry where you know some of the benefits are at a level where they're more they're better than you know fifteen dollar per hour sort of the you know minimum entry points for many private businesses and it discourages people returning to work so you need to design them in such a way that you don't reduce economic incentives to return to work but you have to have them large enough to protect people you know during one of the more challenging times particularly for people at the at the lower end of the economic scale i always like to say that success is not a straight line up and uh I would, I would give these talks at business schools about how you deal, how to deal with failure, and then I failed. <laughs> and I had to implement the strategy that I was uh, a proponent of to business school students. But I, I think the key, you know, look, we have a, a business uh, with a strategy that makes sense. Uh, we made some mistakes. Uh, experience is learning from those mistakes. That's the key. And then, you know, I was, I was quite confident that if we adhered to the principles that built the success of the firm, or re-adhered, if you will, that we return to success. And it's just a, it's a question of duration and and every day coming into the office and making decisions with, with good judgment and, and being level-headed. And, uh, you know, with time, I was confident that you know, things would recover and, and, you know, feel very fortunate that things have worked out the way that we expected. But I'm certainly going to be, you know, now at 54, uh, I'm done making mistakes. <laughs> so that's my, that's my business plan going forward. We're going to be very, very could be watchful about uh, veering from the course uh, that has led to our, you know, our, our success.